Today, we'll explore essential tools and techniques to help us efficiently diagnose and solve performance issues on Linux systems. Before we dive into the technical details, let's talk about a crucial first step that even seasoned developers sometimes overlook, verifying that there's actually a real performance problem. When someone reports a performance issue, we need to ask probing questions. What makes us think there's a problem? Has the system ever performed better? What recent changes might have affected performance? Can we quantify what slow means in this context? Is the issue affecting multiple users or just one? These questions aren't just formalities. They help clarify the issue, establish a baseline for comparison, and sometimes even resolve the problem without further investigation. Let me share a quick real-world example. A developer once complained about a slow database query taking 5 seconds. After investigating, we found this query had always taken 5 seconds. The issue wasn't performance, but mismatched expectations. Imagine if I jumped right into troubleshooting without asking questions. I would have wasted time and resources chasing a non-existent problem. In auto repair, they call this the parts cannon approach, blindly replacing parts hoping to fix an issue. This highlights why it's critical to confirm there's a genuine performance problem before diving into analysis. It saves time and keeps us focused on solving actual issues, not chasing ghosts. Once we confirm a genuine performance issue, we need to define it precisely. This means moving beyond vague terms like slow to specific metrics. Are web pages taking 10 seconds to load? Are database queries timing out? We need to pinpoint when and where these issues occur. We also need to understand the scope and impact. Is this affecting all servers or just one? How many users are impacted? And what's the business consequence? Finally, we investigate the source of the problem. Is the load coming from legitimate user activity, a specific application, or perhaps a runaway process? We quantify this in terms of requests per second, data transfer rates, and how these change over time. This focused approach creates a clear roadmap for our investigation, ensuring we don't waste time on unrelated areas. Now let's look at some basic tools that can help us gather this information and pinpoint the root cause of our performance issues. We'll start with uptime. The key metric here is the load average, which shows the average number of processes that are either running or waiting for resources over the last 1, 5, and 15 minutes. It's a complex metric that can be influenced by various factors. If these numbers are consistently higher than the number of CPU cores, it might indicate that processes are competing for resources, but it's not always straightforward. High load averages can be caused by CPU-intensive tasks, I.O. bottlenecks, or even short-lived process that quickly come and go. Remember that the low average alone doesn't tell the whole story. It's more a starting point that tells us we might need to investigate further. When we see elevated low averages, that's our cue to dig deeper with other tools. This brings us to the next tool, TOP. TOP provides a dynamic, continuously updated view of the system's processes and key metrics. It's like a dashboard for a system's performance. Some key indicators to watch are the percentage of CPU usage by user processes and system processes. TOP also shows a list of running processes. Pay close attention to any processes consuming an unusually high percentage of CPU or memory. This could be the culprits behind performance issues. Remember, TOP gives us a snapshot of the current moment. For a fuller picture, we might need to watch it over time or use other tools to complement your analysis. Next up is VMstat. VMstat shows multiple system components at once, updating in real time. Key areas to watch include the CPU queue, I.O. wait, swap activity, and I.O. wait time in the CPU section. For a deeper dive into disk I.O., we turn to IOSTAT. It gives us a continuous view of disk activity. Key metrics to watch are transactions per second for disk activity and the percentage of time spent waiting for I.O. operations in the CPU section. IOSTAT breaks down I.O. operations by device. This is useful when we need to identify which specific disk is causing performance issues. Now let's explore NetStat, a useful tool for monitoring network connections. NetStat has many options. We'll focus on a few useful ones for performance analysis. First, let's list all active connections. This command displays all active connections, both incoming and outgoing. It's helpful for identifying open ports and active services on our system. We can display only listening ports. We can also count connections for a specific port. Here we're counting connections on port 80. 
This quick count can help us gauge the load on a particular service. If we see an unusually high number of connections, it might indicate a potential performance issue or a traffic spike that needs investigation. Last but not least, let's look at SAR, which stands for System Activity Reporter. It's a versatile tool that's great for historical data. Here's an example of how it reports CPU usage. While SAR provides similar information to other tools we've discussed, what sets it apart is its ability to save historical data. Many Linux distributions configure SAR to collect data periodically. This automated data collection can be invaluable. If users report intermittent slowdowns, we can use SAR to look back at previous dates and spot performance trends. It's particularly useful for correlating system performance with specific times or events. It might identify patterns not obvious in real-time monitoring. It's important to stress that we are just scratching the surface here. The Linux performance landscape is vast. There are tools for every level of the system, from hardware all the way up to applications, and for every subsystem, from file systems to network stacks. Remember, this process is iterative. We might need to use multiple tools and dig deeper depending on what we find. The key is to start broad with tools like Uptime and Top, then narrow our focus based on what we discovered. If you enjoy our videos, you will love our system design newsletter. We cover important topics and trends in large-scale system design. Join our community of 1 million subscribers from the tech industry. Subscribe at blog.bytebygo.com.